Pakistan is a country with a rich and complex history, marked by breathtaking landscapes and a vibrant culture. However, it has also faced significant social and economic challenges. Among its bustling cities, Lahore stands out with its population of over 10 million people. It was here, in the heart of Lahore, that one of the most shocking criminal cases in Pakistan's history unfolded. Lahore, known for its historical significance and cultural heritage, is often referred to as the heart of Pakistan. Its streets are filled with a blend of the old and new, with ancient Mughal architecture standing side by side with modern buildings. However, behind this vibrant facade lies a darker story, one that shook the city to its core and left a lasting impact on its residents. Discovery of the Crimes On the morning of October 9, 2001, a guard at a maximum security jail in Lahore was making his rounds. As he approached one of the cells, he found the prisoner lying unresponsive on the floor. The guard entered the cell and discovered that the prisoner had been dead for several hours. In a separate cell, another lifeless body was found. These deaths marked the end of a horrifying saga that had gripped the nation, but they also left behind many unanswered questions. The prisoner in question was none other than Jawad Aikibal, a name that had become synonymous with terror and horror in Pakistan. His death, under mysterious circumstances, raised many questions about the prison's security and the true extent of his crimes. The other body found was of his accomplice, who had played a crucial role in Aikibal's gruesome activities. As news of their death spread, the public's reaction was a mix of relief and outrage. The letter and confession. The story began in 1999, just as the new millennium was approaching. In November of that year, the Lahore police received a letter that would change everything. It was a confession, written by a man named Jaw. The letter was graphic and chilling, detailing how he had killed 100 children and disposed of their bodies using acid. Aikibal's letter included the names of his victims and a step-by-step -step account of their murders. He even provided the address of his house, 16 Billion Ravi Road, where he claimed the horrors had taken place. The letter sent shockwaves through the police department. Such a detailed and bold confession was unprecedented. The police were initially skeptical, suspecting it to be a hoax. However, as they began to investigate, the grim reality of Aikubal's claims started to surface. The letter described in horrifying detail how he lured children to his house, killed them, and dissolved their bodies in acid to leave no trace. Police investigation and media involvement. A few days later, a package was delivered to the office of the Daily Jang, Pakistan's oldest broadsheet newspaper. Inside was another letter from Aikubal, along with photographs of his victims and a 32-page diary detailing his crimes. The newspaper quickly published the story, revealing the full extent of Aikubal's atrocities to the public. The police, now fully aware of the gravity of the situation, launched the largest manhunt in Pakistan's history. The media played a crucial role in bringing Aikubal's crimes to light. The detailed diary provided a chilling insight into the mind of a serial killer. It described how he meticulously planned each murder and kept souvenirs from his victims as trophies. The diary also included photographs of the children before and after their deaths, which were too graphic to be published but were instrumental in identifying the victims. Upon searching Aikbal's house, the police found piles of children's clothes and shoes, sleeping pills, and disturbing notes pinned to the walls. Several blue plastic barrels containing human remains were discovered, confirming the gruesome details in Aikbal's letters. Parents of missing children identified their belongings, breaking down in tears as they realized their worst fears had come true. The house at 16 Billion Ravi Road became a crime scene like no other. The walls were covered in bloodstains, and the air was thick with the smell of chemicals. The barrels containing the remains of the children were a stark reminder of the horrors that had taken place within those walls. The police also found a video camera with footage of Aikubal torturing and killing his victims, which served as irrefutable evidence of his guilt. Jod Aikubal's Background Born into a wealthy family, Jod Aikubal was the sixth child of a successful businessman. From a young age, he exhibited signs of aggression and violence, often attacking other children and killing animals. His parents doted on him, fueling his sense of entitlement and superiority. Despite his privileged background, Aikubal's life was marked by failed business ventures and disturbing behavior. Aikubal's businesses often involved young boys whom he exploited and abused. He lured them with promises of work or gifts, only to subject them to horrific acts of violence. His manipulative tactics and ability to evade the law made him a dangerous predator. He
He used his wealth and influence to cover up his crimes, bribing officials and threatening anyone who dared to speak out against him. As Iqbal grew older, his behavior became more erratic. He would often disappear for days, leaving his family worried and confused. When he was around, he would isolate himself, spending hours locked in his room. His family, unaware of the extent of his crimes, attributed his behavior to stress and pressure from his failed businesses. Little did they know, Iqbal was plotting his next move, preparing to take more innocent lives, capture and confession. After weeks on the run, Jawad Iqbal surrendered at the office of the Daily Jang on December 29, 1999. He walked in and declared himself the killer of 100 children, expressing no remorse for his actions. During an hour-long conversation with journalists, Iqbal detailed how he had committed the murders and disposed of the bodies. He was quickly arrested, bringing an end to his reign of terror, creed for better support systems to protect them from exploitation and abuse. Iqbal's trial was one of the most high-profile cases in Pakistan's history. The courtroom was packed with journalists, family members of the victims, and curious onlookers. Iqbal, however, remained calm and composed throughout the proceedings, showing no signs of remorse. He even taunted the families of his victims, saying that he had no regrets and that he would do it all over again if given the chance. The trial ended with Iqbal being sentenced to death, a verdict that brought some sense of closure to the families of the victims. However, Iqbal's death in prison before his execution could be carried out left many questions unanswered. The official cause of death was listed as suicide, but there were rumors of foul play, with some suggesting that he was killed to prevent him from revealing more about his accomplices and the extent of his crimes. The case led to significant changes in Pakistan's legal system, including stricter laws against child abuse and exploitation. It also highlighted the need for better mental health support and rehabilitation for troubled individuals to prevent them from becoming a danger to society. The legacy of Jawad Iqbal serves as a grim reminder of the horrors that can occur when evil is allowed to flourish unchecked, impact on society. The Jawad Iqbal case left an indelible mark on Pakistani society. It brought to light the issue of child exploitation and the vulnerabilities faced by runaway and homeless children. The public outcry led to increased awareness in the establishment of numerous NGOs focused on child protection. Schools and community centers started programs aimed at educating children and parents about the dangers of predators like Iqbal. The case also had a profound impact on the families of the victims. Many struggled with the loss of their children and the trauma of knowing the horrific manner in which they were killed. Support groups and counseling services were established to help them cope with their grief. The story of Jawad Iqbal serves as a stark reminder of the importance of vigilance and the need to protect the most vulnerable members of society.